This question seems insane. You're given all these conditions and numbers and it's, it's hard to know how to build an equation that kind of deals with this, but it's a great example of just like trust the process, even on the hardest questions. Assume simple things and uh, use simple equations and stay organized and you'll be fine. They're talking about mean, so I probably should use the formula for mean or average, which is that the sum of the numbers is divided by the number of numbers. So they're talking about a set of 10 integers and we don't know the average other than that it's an integer that's greater than 42. Well, what's an integer that's greater than 42? How about 43? So 43 is a good assumption for the average. We know that there are 10 of these in, uh, integers within the set. We know nine of them, but we don't know a missing one, right? So what we can do is we can solve for an x that is added into the nine integers that we have. So what is the sum of these other nine integers? It's 378. And I could literally just do it, or I could even use another version of the uh, average formula because they tell me the mean is 42 and there are nine integers, or so let's not use x actually, let's use y. Um, nine times 42, I just wanna make sure, is 378. So the sum would be 378. So that number is added into some other number. And we're trying to find basically what is the largest number in this set. I guarantee you it's gonna be x. It's, there's no way it's one of the numbers that's sitting there. So let's solve. So this multiply by 10, we get 430 is equal to x plus 378. Subtract the 378. So 430 minus 378 is 52. Now 52 is bigger than all the other numbers in this set. So it re stands to reason that that's probably the largest number that it could be. Now you might be thinking, well, what, what's to say it can't be higher, right? They give us a limit. They say it has to be less than 60. So why wouldn't it be able to be 40, uh, 53, 55, 59, right? You know, what, what prevents that? Well, my guess at this point is that it's because of the, the, the fact that everything needs to be an integer. So if I picked a different number, right, even if I just picked 53, it's gonna throw things off. It's not gonna divide out nicely. We're gonna get a decimal or a fraction. So I'm, again, I'm trusting the process a bit. If I were skeptical, the place to make a change wouldn't be with the value of x. It would be with the average. So if you really wanna try it, change the 43. Right, we needed an integer greater than 42. We did 43 because it was just the next one. But let's just try 44, right? Let's do the next next one and see what happens. So 44 is the mean. We still have 10 numbers. We still have a mystery. And we still have 378 for the other nine numbers that we know. So now we have 440 equals x plus 378. Do that subtraction and we're gonna get that 440 minus 378 is 62. Well, that's a problem because they told me it has to be less than 60. So I, I don't think I needed to prove this, but you can see now that I've done it, like why this works out is it's like, okay, if we increased the average even one more integer, we, wouldn't, we would have a value that's, that's not meeting our conditions. So this is why a lot of times the simplest thing that you can assume is usually the best. Don't make your life harder. Don't imagine all the other like weird possibilities that could happen. It, it, the safest move is probably the easiest move. And you can prove it. Like we still proved that 52 was in that set. We were still able to do some math. It wasn't just like a gut feeling. But we, I wasn't bothered by all the conditions. I, I just used the simple formula to kind of organize myself. So a lot of times on hard questions, that's really all it is, is use the simple formula. There's all these twists, but anchor yourself on something that's untwisted, that's normal, that's basic, that's memorizable. In this case, the average formula really just gets us everything we need.